Hey Limeys, guess what today is? Happy anniversary to me and Bella. Um, a year ago today, we came home from St. George. It's crazy. It's a crazy thought. It's been a crazy year. Um, so I thought I would do a video on what this last year has been like, what I've learned, what's next. Um, she's at the movies. It's absolutely like whew, over her head that the hardest two weeks of her life came to a conclusion today, a year ago. Um, and if that doesn't, if that's not a testimonial to, um, the validity and the credibility of extreme whole body hypothermia, I don't know what is. I mean, she's just like, Lyme does not define me. Whereas for those of us that are older and have had it longer, it becomes such a defining part of who we are. And for her, she's like, I went and taught a rock climbing class this morning and then I went to the movies and maybe I'll go to the farmer's market tonight and hang out with my friends. It saved her life and it gave her a productive one. Um, so it's been great. It's been great to watch her become a normal teenager that I just want to some days. Yeah. And keep putting off the fact that she wants her driver's permit. I'm like, Oh God, help us all. Anyway. <clears throat> so for me this last year, lots of up just living and and being and not existing and surviving but rooted and living and enjoying and laughing from my gut and I'll never forget the day that James and I heard Isabella like laugh and the fact that we had forgotten what that sound was like so so many joyous almost like firsts again um standing up and not having my feet hurt and you know being able to do 1500 different errands in a day and come home and then go take the dogs for a walk or a hike or whatever a, a true appreciation for health and wellness is what I have have learned and gained in the last year um and then the the humbleness and I don't know what the right word is, you know, maybe getting cocky and then having it all just fucking blow up. I'm still, you guys, um, what, I'm seven, eight weeks now, longer, but seven or eight with the IVs. Um, back to colonics. Yeah, I know you're jealous. Try to contain yourselves, people. Just really, it, the shit hit the fan. And I'm still trying to figure it out uh, for a long time or long time, weeks. I've been thinking mm, this kind of feels like Bartonella. Now I'm thinking after I've been doing some research and some reading that this might be some EBV, some viral numbers. And I will, I'm getting labs done this week to kind of see what's going on there. So um, having those highs and that that high level of functioning and then that PTSD like don't please don't take this away from me to be that scared like was I really appreciating and honoring what I had and now the struggle to get back and it's been it's been very it's been hard I'm not going to lie. It's been hard. It's some serious soul stuff. And it's just like, you know, you do the, f why me? I'm trying to watch my language. It's not going well. But then at the, at the end of the day, it's, it's not a why me. It's, I need to, I, I, I'm, I'm given an opportunity. This is an opportunity for me to learn, for me to understand, for me to become even more rooted in this case called Christina and what can I learn to share? And so really this year has really been about teaching and learning and researching and understanding. I mean, all the stuff about autism and Lyme and autism and our family dynamic and my marriage and just how Lyme is, became such 
a component of our life, a living, breathing entity of my marriage and my family um, that when you're in it, you don't really understand. And so for those of you that are in a relationship, you need to understand that there are three of you, you, the other individual, and the line. And it needs to be acknowledged and it needs to be talked about and shit, go to therapy. I mean, thank God James and I have the backgrounds in mental health that we do um, and we have the communication that we do because even for us with the skill set that we have, there's been, there's been times where it's just like, oh, it's, just, it's hard, hard. We have cre- we created behaviors, patterns of behaviors based on being sick And then me being able to acknowledge and understand that I'm doing something and he's reacting and vice versa. And how do we actively engage, uh, talk about it, and then work to change the behavior? I mean, doing the work. It's, there's been a lot. So that's been a great blessing. It really has. So a couple of weeks ago, well, actually, I should go back like a month or so ago. My mom hasn't really been feeling well and she's been struggling with her quality of life. And, you know, when you get your cranium cracked open twice in 15 years, shit's going to happen. And it wasn't even the craniotomy. It was the radiation. It just jacked her program. And so I was fast on the track for stem cell, stem cell, stem cell, negating the fact that there are tumors still present in her noggin. There are... After the radiation, they're stagnant. We don't know if they're dead, but they're definitely <laughs> sedated. <laughs> but it negates her out of any stem cell program, as it should. You know, stem cell is a growth deal. We don't need any help with those tumors. So in this, this process, um, and doing all of my homework <clears throat> and trying to understand things and how best to help her, I get her to a place where I'm like, okay, we're going to go. And it's not going to be stem cell, but it's going to be, you know, hopefully dendritic cell therapy. We'll know when we meet with the medical team. And she says to me, okay, I'll go, but you have to go for treatment. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm fine. She's like, yeah, you were fine. Not so much anymore. So we went through the mother-daughter deal. And I lost (laughs) I lost. Like, well, I don't even know why I tried. Um, but the reality is, is that in my conversation with James, he was like, okay, 30 years from now, y- the situation is reversed and it's you and Bella. And you knew that this therapy is what Bella needed. He's like, would you be taking no for an answer? Would this be a conversation? And I was like, oh, I hate it when he's right. It's frustrating. <laughs> anyway. So on Sunday, I leave with my mom to go to San Oviv for my own stem cell treatment. And I think what really kind of made me okay with it, because I've been struggling with it, and you can, you can hit up Brandy Johnson. She'll tell you. I called her. I was like, I need a pep talk. Like, I got this cycle going on in my head. And I was like, pretty much I need the pep talk I gave you nine months ago back at me. And it was actually Dr. Meza. And he was like, Christina, I want you to tell me why you want stem cell therapy. You're a year out from hyperthermia. Why do you want stem cell? And I had to really like get real with my shit. And I was like, you know what? I have... I have a lot to do in this world. I have a lot to say. I have a lot to teach. I have a lot to learn. And I can't do that operating at the level that I am. The level I was in December, I'm golden. But I've I've, I've slid back. And all the work that I'm doing... And yes, it does not escape me that in, you know, the grand scheme of time, eight weeks is not that much time, 12-ish. It's not. But I'm not getting any traction. And this opportunity has been presented to me. 
And I said, I, I want people to see. I want to be able to run mountains in honor of Lyme warriors. I want to be able to swim oceans in honor of Lyme warriors. I want to stand on my soapbox about whatever the newest research is that I've learned about, because if it helps one of us to have 30% better life, 40%, or even right now as I stand here, 70% chance or better percentage of life, then, then I'm going to do it. So you guys are going to have me for a while. I just, I'm, I'm sick of all of us being told that there's nothing wrong. The triathlete that I spoke to in Idaho this week, had, had a doctor tell her, yeah, there's no Lyme in Idaho. What? I swear to God, I'm going to have a stroke. It's everywhere, people. It's everywhere. Sorry, my phone is going to fall. So, so you guys are going to be able to see Son of Eve and videos from Son of Eve. And James will be taking over all of the updates on the Boy Wonder. So you guys will be able to hear him and see him. And I'll be able to watch from Son of Eve. Um... So welcome to chapter, I don't even know, chapter two, chapter 2.0, chapter three, three and a half. I'm not even really sure at this point, but I guess we're just going to call it chapter stem cell. And um, I don't think I can upload from there. Um, they only have Wi-Fi in one room, but at least I think it'll work. Unlike, unlike St. George, where you're walking around the building, and you're like, crap, I had three bars right here. Um, but that's what's happening in alternative Lyme life. One year out from hypothermia, headed into stem cell, trying to repair this, the shit show that I got going on. Not really sure how it happened. But I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And if what I go through helps some of you, then it's, like I said, it's always, it's worth it. So, to all of you, mwah, love and light, health and wellness, detox. Jesus, I'm detoxing like a mother. Please, you guys, don't ever stop actively detoxing. You do not want to end up right where I am. And I didn't even stop. I think I just maybe got a little lazy and wasn't active in it. So detox. And two more steps. Or in my case, lately, two more strokes. As I get ready, it's ugh, for my Alcatraz swim. Yay, Dad. I'm so excited. <laughs> Yummy, murky Bay Area water. Yay, team. So anyway, to all of you, mwah. Happy anniversary to Bella and I, and I will see you guys on the flip side of Son of Eve. Bye.